Okay, part three of my wood gasification boiler system with thermal storage. In this part, I want to talk about uh, getting heat from thermal storage over to the house. And basically, uh, that's what we're looking at against the wall over here. Uh, basically, we're pulling off hot water off the top, the top tank and thermal storage. Uh, isolation valve. Uh, taco air scoop with automatic vent. Uh, we're using one inch copper lines. We have a uh, strainer here to protect the uh, plate exchangers which are next in line. Um, actually I don't recommend a strainer. These things can plug up fairly quickly at times and then you've got to uh, open up your system a little bit to clean those out. I would really uh, recommend one of these uh, Kalefi dirt traps. Uh, very much less likely to plug up and serviceable with the system in use. And I'll probably be pulling that strainer out and, and putting one of the dirt separators in its place. And so our hot water is coming on down. We have a 60 plate exchanger. So um, boiler water through the exchanger. And this ice, uh, exchanger allows isolation of the loop that's going to pull over and heat the house. Well, we'll continue with this circuit. I have a second 60-plate pl exchanger next in series uh, that there's nothing connected to. That's for future expansion or, or other use. Uh, we'll continue on down. We have our uh, Grunfos Alpha 2 ECM circulator. These are really nice little pumps, super efficient. Uh, they use about half the power as a normal circulator. And we come down around another isolation valve and back into thermal storage. We're going back in into the lower tank as low as possible in that tank as we can. So I'm looking at the loop going over to the house. We have return water. Coming from the house, uh, circulator and pushing it through, plate exchanger, isolation valve, uh, hot water should be coming out of the exchanger here. Since this is an isolated flow circuit, we need another expansion tank, air scoop, pressure gauge, and vent, automatic vent. And we're heading down the down the wall to where the uh, lines exit this building and and head, head over to the house in a I've got one inch uh, PEX aluminum PEX lines uh, placed down into a trench used I used the foam in trench method to get my lines insulated and those lines go over about 8500 feet to the house and enter the garage Talk a little bit about the control of this circuit. Um, basically, I have a control box here with a relay and a thermostat line coming from the house. So when the house calls for heat, house thermostat calls for heat, I get 24 volts signal over to my relay. Relay closes and turns on both pumps. So it turns on the lower pump, which circulates hot water through the two play exchangers and back back into the bottom of the storage and it also turns on this pump which uh, pumps the water through my 300 some feet circuit over to the house and the way I have we have this working is uh, when the thermostat calls for heat the uh, pumps turn on immediately and then there's a, another time there is actually a time delay relay in the forced air furnace in the house and about two minutes later with a two minute delay uh, we turn the circulation fan in the forced air furnace. Uh, the reason for that is we don't want to turn that fan on early uh, just to circulate cold air because the hot water hasn't made it there yet. Now a lot of folks with outside boilers uh, the circulation pump going over to the house they run that 24-7 and one of the reasons they do that is uh, if, uh, if, if they leave on vacation or something, they need water flowing to, for, pre, 
freeze protection. Uh, there's a couple downsides to that. One would be you're running your circulator pump 24-7. Uh, those things can run, uh, pull anywhere, you know, a, a typical, typical non-ECM circulator could draw 60 to 80 watts. Um, you run that for six months straight. That's, that's definitely some power consumption there. And the other thing is, uh, so you're running 180 degree or whatever temperature water through, through that loop over to your other structure, your heating, your house or whatever. And uh, yes, you have insulated lines. Uh, however, you have quite a temperature differential when you're dealing with uh, 180 degree water to probably 50, 50 degrees in the ground. Um, I don't care how good your lines are, how good the insulation is, there is going to be thermal loss. And uh, so the route I went here was to uh, pump water only when heat is required in the house. Uh, saving energy on electric electricity costs on the pump and uh, not losing all the heat to the ground, which again should be minimal if you have good insulation. But again, uh, there's no way to totally eliminate that loss. Now, because I have uh, intermittent flow through those lines, and also my lines are not all under the uh, frost level here in Minnesota, I would need to be about six, seven feet down consistently all the way over. Um, I chose to run glycol in the loop for freeze protection. And that's the main reason for the plate exchangers uh, to isolate the house loop, which is 15 gallons of water in that loop from the thermal storage, which is over a thousand. Uh, I don't know about you, but a thousand gallons of uh, glycol is uh, something I can't afford, probably more than the boiler itself and, and maybe the rest of the system put together. Now the downside of a plate exchanger is uh, <clears throat> is probably if I have a right now with the system set up the way it is, I have 180 maximum of 185 degree temperature running from storage down from top top of the storage to the bottom. And uh, but if I check my output up here in this loop, um, in fact, if I check my temperature right here on the scoop, I'm getting about 165. So, so I'm losing 15, I'm not losing 15 degrees, but, um, but I am delivering water to the house that is 15 degrees less than my storage. So tells me a couple, tells me one thing for sure that I could have used a bigger plate exchanger. Um, one of the things I'm going to do to resolve that since I have a second exchanger unused, I'll probably add that in series, put the two plate exchangers in series with the house loop and hopefully uh, get higher temperatures delivered to the house. Um, when it comes to exchangers, plate exchangers, and water to air exchangers, uh, if you're using one in your house furnace, I highly recommend you oversize and then go another size bigger yet. There's really no downside other than they cost a little bit more. And that's about it for this, this portion.